Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will do the back ex exercise questions from exception handling in Python from class 12 computer science with Python book. Okay, so uh, this is the NCRT book back exercise questions. Starting with the first question, every syntax error is an exception, but every exception cannot be a syntax error and we have to justify this statement. So definitely this statement is true because See, and there can be many kinds of exceptions and the syntax error is one kind of exception. So an exception can be a syntax error, an exception can be a logical error, runtime error or many different kinds of errors that we have studied about. And I'll also provide the link for the same in the uh, description box. You can study those previous videos also, but it is not necessary that every uh, exception will be a syntax error. A syntax error will definitely be an exception because it is a subclass. It is a type of exception but exceptions are of other types also. That is why every exception will not be a syntax error but definitely syntax error is a type of exception is a kind of exception. Okay? So coming to the next question uh, you are asked that when are the following built-in exceptions raised give examples to support your answers okay so we have uh, dedicated a complete video to this i will give the link of the video in the description box also but let me just quickly go over each of these parts the first part says uh, that the error uh, we are talking about is the import error so the import error or exception occurs when you are trying to import a module of python but that module does not exist or you have misspelled the name of an existing module in python okay so if you if you uh, are trying to import the math module and you instead write import mathematics then this will lead to an import error okay the next is the io error so io means input output and io error generally occurs when you are trying to uh, do some processing with files okay so when you are trying to open a file uh, whose name you have spelled incorrectly and or you are trying to read from a file that does not exist this will lead to an io error okay the next is the name error so the name error basically means that you are trying to access a variable whose name has not been defined previously in python so you are trying to print a variable which you have not defined or declared or you have not assigned any value as of now in python programming language okay so basically when you are writing a program and you directly print say print abc and before using this variable abc you have not referred to you have not specified what abc is then this will lead to a name error okay then is the zero division error so the zero division error as the name suggests it will arise when you try to make uh, uh, you try to perform integer division such that the division uh, the denominator used in the division is zero so you cannot divide by zero so that is a zero division error so all these types of exceptions and errors i have explained in the video along with the examples so i have linked the given the link of the video in the description box as well as to the right side of this video as well so you can refer to those videos for further understanding the next question is what is the use of raise statement write a code to accept two numbers and display the question and appropriate exception should be raised if the user enters the second number that is the denominator as zero so again we have studied that the raise keyword is used to raise or to define uh, an exception and whenever a condition is satisfied you can always use the raise keyword to raise or to throw an exception in python so uh, this is the purpose of the raise statement it is used to throw an exception and to create an exception whenever a certain condition is uh, uh, met so uh, about the code i have written the code here so we basically have to write a code in which we are accepting two numbers from the user so i have written these two python statements uh, i have taken two variables num and den so num refers to the numerator we are asking the user to enter the numerator and then we are asking the user to enter the denominator and then we are checking if the denominator is zero 
then we will use the raise keyword to raise the zero division error exception and when this exception is raised this particular statement will be printed that denominator cannot be zero otherwise if the this condition if the if condition becomes false the print statement will be printed if the exception is raised this print statement will not be executed so let's execute both the cases for this particular code so when i execute this it is first asking me for the numerator i enter 4 then it is asking me for the denominator i en enter 2 which is not 0 so directly the if condition becomes false the exception has not been raised and this print statement has been executed so you get question is 2 now what happens if i execute this statement again uh, this code again and i put the denominator as 0 so you can see very clearly that a zero division error has occurred and the uh, statement that you mentioned here denominator cannot be zero has also been printed along with this the interpreter is also saying from where the exception has been raised because this condition was satisfied and from this particular line the exception was raised okay so coming to the next uh, question use the assert statement in question number three to test the division expression so we are uh, to use the same kind of code we have to write the same kind of code but now instead of using the raise keyword we have to use the assert statement to raise the exception so assert statement as i told you is generally used just after the function call or as the first line of a function within a function definition so that you can check the values of the arguments that have been passed so uh, in the same uh, manner if we define a function named question which takes two arguments numerator and denominator and then as the first line of the function i check whether the denominator is not equal to false so the rule for the assert statement was that if this particular condition written in front of the assert state assert keyword becomes false then the exception is raised so if denominator is not equal to zero if this uh, condition becomes false then uh, the uh, exception will be raised so let's see what happens in the first case when we are calling the function with the value with the arguments 4 and 2 so 2 is not equal to 0 this condition is true so in this case exception will not be raised and the print statement will be executed okay So as of now, I have commented uh, this second question, second part. So when only the first function call is executed, then you see the print statement question is zero. Now, if I comment the first function call and uncomment the second function call. So basically we are executing or we are calling the function with the values four and zero. So denominator not equal to zero this condition will become false and an exception will be raised so you can see assertion error exception has been raised and the statement that you specified denominator cannot be zero has also been printed okay so this is how you use the assert statement you write the condition on which you want to raise the exception whenever the condition becomes false the exception is raised now the next question says define the following exception handling throwing an exception and catching an exception so i have made three separate videos for each of these i have linked them in the description also so very quickly i'll just recap what is exception handling so exception handling basically refers to writing a code in the program that handles if any kind of error occurs so whenever an error occurs in a program and you write specific code to handle that any kind of error or any specific kind of error that particular uh, code writing that particular process is known as exception handling 
Now, what is throwing an exception? So, whenever an error occurs, you uh, the Python interpreter creates an object about that error and that object is known as the exception object. This exception object contains the information about the error, what is the name, what is its type, what, where it has occurred, uh, the position and so on. And when this exception object is given by the Python interpreter to the runtime system that is executing the entire program, then this process is known as throwing an exception. Now, what is catching an exception? When the runtime system starts to find an appropriate exception handler code to handle that particular exception that has been thrown, this process is known as catching an exception. Okay. Now, coming to the next question, explain catching exceptions using try and accept block. So, again, we can take the same example of zero division error that we have considered previously and we will use the try accept block. So, the try keyword encloses all those code statements that might result into an error. So, what I have done, I have taken the two uh, uh, the statements that take user input and the statement that calculates the question as a part of the try block. Okay, So, these statements will accept the numerator and denominator from the user and this statement will calculate the question and try to print it. So, if an exception occurs, the zero division error if that occurs when the denominator is 0, this can be handled using the accept keyword and when this happens, the statement print exception denominator cannot be 0 will be printed. Okay, So, let us see, let us enter a number say 5 and let us enter the denominator as 2. So, in this case, the question is 2.5. Now, if we say our uh, numerator is 5 and the denominator is 0. So, you see the accept clause has been executed and this statement has been printed. Okay, So, this is the exception that denominator cannot be 0. Coming to the next question, consider the code given below and fill in the blanks. So, uh, here is a code written in Python and you have to fill the appropriate names or keywords that will fit in this code. So, what it is what is uh, this code doing is first it is printing a statement learning exception there is no error this will be printed as it is. Now, in the try block again it is accepting two numbers and finding the question of these two numbers and then uh, the print statement will be executed if this second number is not 0. So, now uh, let us first come to this particular accept case. If we want the denominator should not be 0 and uh, uh, we want if the denominator becomes 0, then the 0 division error to be raised, then we can write here 0 division error just as we wrote in the previous question. So, 0 division error. We have written 0 division error because this particular exception will be raised when the denominator is 0. Okay. Now, coming to this part, in this case, what we want to specify that the user should only enter integers. So, if any kind of non-integer value is entered, then we want the value error to be raised. So, I have explained each of these errors in the built-in uh, exceptions that are present in Python, the video that is named built-in exceptions in Python. You can refer to those uh, uh, videos as well. Now, the last case is we want some statement to be always executed at the end and for this we will be using the finally keyword. No matter whether an exception has occurred or not, this particular statement job over go get some rest will always be executed. So, let us execute this particular code with different cases and see whether it is working as we want it. First, we are trying to enter a number say 7 and uh, let us enter a string value and see whether the value error occurs or not. So, as soon as we entered the first number and I entered the character y, See, it has raised the value error and said, please enter only numbers. So, this particular fill in the blank is correct. Also, we always wanted the last statement to be printed. So, even when the exception has been raised, the last statement has been printed. So, this keyword, this fill in the blank is also correct. 
Now coming to the second part, let's see whether the zero revision error is being raised. So yes, the zero revision error is also being raised. Number two should not should not be zero. So number two here refers to the second number that is being entered. Okay. So that's for this particular code. Coming to the next question. In the next question, you are being told that in class eleventh you learned how to use the math module. Now write a code where you use the wrong number of arguments for a method, say square root or power function, and use exception handling process to catch the value error. So I've written a piece of code in which I have imported the math module and I've named it as m. So I'll be using m in place of math uh, in my code. And I have written a try except block. So, in since I have to raise a value error, I will try to give wrong number of arguments in any of these functions. Say, if I say square root, what, uh, when will a value error occur for square root function? When I am trying to give a non-integral value or a, a value that is not a positive integer. So in case, in this case, when I try to calculate the, the square root value of a negative number, then the value error will be raised. So it is incorrect number of arguments. Actually, it should be an incorrect argument, but you can print any statement here, incorrect argument, this will also be fine, okay? So if you have to raise a value error, you need to specify a value that does not fit in the requirements for the function that you are passing, okay? So that was all for today's video. I hope you have understood all the questions. In case you have any doubts, let me know in the comment section below. Also subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon if you want to get the notifications for our upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. Till we meet in the next video. Mind your exam.